Good morning, everybody, and welcome to service this morning. It's great to be with you once again on this beautiful Sunday morning. I trust that the Word of God is going to bless you, enrich your life, and also help you and cause you to recognize things in your life that possibly needs to change. And I know the Word of God is going to richly encourage us. Before we get into the Word, why don't we just close our eyes and pray as we dedicate the service to the Lord. So, Father, it's into your presence we come. We thank you for another opportunity that your word can be shared this morning. Thank you, Lord, that as we speak around this topic of prayer, thank you, Lord, that you will enlighten us, give us revelation knowledge of your word. Thank you, Father God, for this powerful and privilege that we have, that we can approach your throne room with prayer. So therefore, Holy Spirit, as I teach the word of God, I pray that understanding will come to the hearts and the minds of each and every person that hears the word this morning. And I thank you so much for your love, your grace, and your mercy in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, family, as I said in my prayer this morning, we're going to talk to you about prayer. And I've entitled this message, The Power of Prayer. And so a lot of us, a lot of people over across the world from different religions knows that they need to be praying. And we believe that we pray to a God that answers our prayers. Now, how many of you listening to this message today perhaps have prayed and have trusted God for different things in your life and you have seen how the Lord has come through in different areas of your life? I remember in 2016, we had an opportunity to go over to the United States of America to go to San Antonio in Texas and there we would spend a couple of days, five days to be exact, me and my wife, we would go as it was part of the incentives that we have won at the place of employment at the time, which was at Christian Family Church. And while we had won these incentives, we then thought, why don't we take our kids along and really just extend our stay and then have a holiday, as it's not every day that you would fly over to a different country. We then realized that we would need to have a number of, or a sum of money rather, to be able to take our kids with and also to enjoy and have a holiday over there. We then, after we did our budget and after we started planning, we then realized that we needed to trust the Lord and pray to the Lord for a sum of 220,000 Rand. That is the amount that we would need of our own money because we would plan to go to do different things. We, for example, wanted to go on a boat cruise, we wanted to go to Disney World, and all of this added up to about 220,000 Rand of our own money that we would need in order to make this trip happen. Nevertheless, we started planning a holiday, put our faith out there, trusted the Lord, prayed about it, and we knew in our hearts that the Lord would make this possible. Now, you know, 220,000, I'm not sure about you, but for me, it's a lot of money, you know, and I don't have 220,000 Rand lying around just at my disposal at any time. So really, we needed to put our faith out there. We started saving. We didn't have much time, but we needed to start putting money aside so that we could enjoy this holiday. And really, if you look at what we planned on this trip, we planned to go on a cruise or we would spend five days at Disney, either one of the two because we did not have finances to do both. However, our desire was to be able to do both on this trip. We were then going to go on a road trip, driving from San Antonio down to Miami, Florida. And there, again, we would have to trust the Lord for vehicle hire and for gas money to be able to travel the 250,000 kilometers or 250, yeah, it was 1,000 kilometers that we needed um, to be able to get from San Antonio through to, um, to where we needed to be in Miami. And so 2,500 kilometers, that's the amount that we needed to travel. 2,500 kilometers was not a short drive. So we would do it over three days, which means we would have to stop over in Orlando, um, and not Orlando, sorry, um, New Orleans. In New Orleans, we would spend three days, and all of this, would cost money for us to go. But we put our faith out there. And the Lord made it possible for us. 
little miracles happened in our lives. You know, we would receive, for example, we would receive an insurance claim of 25,000 Rand a year. We would then go and we would receive discounted tickets. We would receive discounted, um, I remember on the cruise, the cruise that we found, our children cruised for free. They didn't have to pay for, for any of the cruise fees. And so instead of doing either the cruise or Disney, we were able to do both. Why? Because we are trusted the Lord, we prayed about it, and the Lord had come through for us. Again, in 2018, we had friends that immigrated to um, San Antonio in Texas, and we wanted to go visit them. So again, we put our faith out there for um, a, a sum of around about 230000 that we needed. And, um, you know, just the flight tickets alone would cost us in the region of about 100,000 Rand because it's for four of us from here to um, New York. And in New York, we would spend five days and there too, we would need accommodation. There's certain things that we want to do, like for example, go to the Statue of Liberty. We want to do, go and have a look at the different museums um, that they have in New York, famous museums. And so for all of this, we needed around about 230,000 Rand. We put our faith out there, we st stood on the word of God that says that whatever we trust the Lord for, whatever we believe for, the desires of our hearts, God will give it to us. And we stood on the word of God. And I remember one day, out of the blue, my wife got a phone call from someone that said to her, she would like to be able to bless us, but financially she's not in the position to be able to bless us with money. But what she would want to do is, she wants to bless us with family discounted plane tickets, aeroplane tickets. And these are her words. She said, Pastor, I'm not sure if you guys fly at all, but you know, this is what I would like to bless you with. And so she did that. So to cut a long story short, after she had blessed us with those tickets, our return tickets to New York costed in the region of about 7,000 Rand. Not 100,000, but 7,000 Rand. Because we went on to a family tickets, onto a friend's tickets, what they call the buddy tickets. And um, we were really blessed that our plane tickets really cost, cut our cost by probably a tenth of what it would originally cost us. And so these are just two of the testimonies that I've seen how God had come through for us. Just recently, in July, end of July this year, last month, we were trusting the Lord that we would be debt free. And so we put our faith out there. We also put all our extra money into our um, different accounts or debts that we did have. And when it came to the end of July, we still had a little bit of debt left and um, we didn't exactly know how we we're gonna get that covered. But on the 11th hour, the Lord came through for us and we were blessed with a sum of money from a complete anonymous and unexpected source. Um, and we were able to clear our debt by the time and the goal that we have set ourselves for. And so God comes through for us in many, many different ways. And family, I can go on and on and on telling you about the goodness and the grace of God and the different testimonies that God has allowed us to experience simply by putting our faith in Him, asking Him and trusting Him that He would come through for us. And so prayer is very, very important. It should be part of every Christian's life because God is not a man that he will lie. If he promises something, he will come through for us all the time. And so when we pray, we communicate with God. We speak to God and we also need to listen to God. You see, friend, prayer is not a one-way communication. It's not you speaking to God, but it also involves you listening to the direction and the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you pray, and it's not if you pray, but it's when, because we all need to be praying. It is important that we learn to listen to the voice of God. As Christians, we need to pray. The Bible tells us, and therefore it's not a suggestion, but rather a command 
from the Lord. You know, Paul tells us that we should be praying without stopping, without ceasing. In 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 17 and 18, the Bible says here, Paul speaking to the church, he says, pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. This is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. You know, you want to know one thing, is that God hears your prayers and He listens to what you ask Him. And the Bible tells us that we have, can have the confidence that when we do pray to God, that He does hear us. You see, prayer for a believer, it is very powerful and it affects every area of our lives. If we simply pray and we believe. Now prayer, a praying woman or a praying man, a praying person, is someone that trusts God. They know that when they pray, their prayers are heard and answered by God. He or she, therefore, has to exercise their faith in God. You see, friend, the opposite is also true. That a Christian that does not pray have very little or no trust in God. And therefore, they will lose their hope. And if they lose their hope, they can't exercise their faith. Because without faith, without hope rather, you cannot have faith. Listen to this promise from the Word of God concerning prayer. It's found in 1 John 5 verse 14. And I'm going to read through to verse 15. Here John says, he says, Now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, that He hears us. Verse 15, And if He hears us, whatever we ask for, we know that He also will give us the petitions of our hearts. There it is. We can have confidence, we can have boldness when we approach God in prayer. We know that we are praying to the one true God. You know, our Father is well able to answer our prayers. He is well able to give us the desires of our hearts. If, and there's the condition, if we pray according to His will. Not our will, but His will. You see, we need to find a scripture in the Bible that we can stand on declaring the promises of God. Whenever you have a prayer request, whenever someone comes to me with a prayer request, the first thing that I would ask them is what scripture are we standing on? Because I need to know that if I'm going to agree with you in prayer, that your prayers are in line with the word of God. I never want to come to in the, into agreement with someone, but their request violates or contradicts God's word. I cannot agree with a prayer like that. And so therefore, we need to remind God of His promises. We need to call upon His promises. We need to have scripture that backs up our prayer requests. Now, why do we remind God of our promises, of His promises? It's not because God forgets His promises. It's so that you can remember the promises of God. And that God is not slack in withholding His promises from you. He is not doing this to frustrate you. He is not doing this on purpose to try and test you. God answers our prayers on time, in time, and every time. You see, friend, prayer will do several things for a believer. For a righteous person, you will do several things. It will, number one, bring you closer to God. It will also make you more sensitive to hearing the voice of God. Number three, it will build you spiritually. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Jude 20, it says, pray in the spirit so that you can build yourself up on your most high faith. Number five, what does prayer do for, for a believer? It gives them insight into God's provision. It also helps them to overcome Satan and all his devices. Number seven, it clarifies God's will for your life as a child of God. Number eight, it also enables you to receive spiritual gifts. 
You know those spiritual gifts that the Bible speaks about in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1. Praying helps you to receive those spiritual gifts. Number nine, it brings you into fellowship with God. Number 10, prayer brings grace and mercy and peace upon your life. According to Philippians 4 verse 6 and 7. Number 11, prayer also for a believer, it will bring healing. It will also bring wisdom, knowledge and revelation from Christ. Prayer will also deliver you out of trouble and all afflictions. And then the last one is that prayer will give you power for ministry. So prayer does a whole lot of things for the righteous person, for a believer. Listen to this translation of the word in James chapter 5, 16, New Living Translation. It says you confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And this is what I want to point out out of this verse. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power to produce wonderful results. I'm going to read the same scripture, James 5, 16, but I'm going to read it then from the message translation. It says here, confess and acknowledge how you have offended one another and then pray for one another and be instantly healed. So prayer, with prayer comes healing and instant healing comes from a person that lives a repentive life. And then the verse goes on to say, for tremendous power is released through passionate, heartfelt prayer of the godly believer. You see, friend, there's a couple of words that I want to pull out from these two translations. It speaks about the earnest prayer. It speaks about passionate and heartfelt prayer, describing words. You see, your prayers that this is talking about here are prayers that are heartfelt, that are passionate, that is earnest. You're setting time aside with God to pray. You know, it's, other translations use words like effectual prayers or fervent prayers or continual prayers, insistent prayers. You know, prayers that we really go to God and we press in and we're really speaking to God with intensity. It's not prayers like when you pray for your food before dinner or breakfast or lunch. You know those headache prayers where you sit with your, with your head in your hands and you, you say a silent prayer. This is talking about the effective, fervent, intentional prayer of a righteous person avails much. It tells us that when we pray this way, that our prayers are effective and powerful to give us wonderful results. And so God has also given us the gift of praying in the Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, it says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. The Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we to pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words, and he who searches the hearts of a man knows the mind of the man, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Listen to 1 Corinthians 14 verse 2, and then I'll also read verse 14 and 15. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, the Spirit himself speaks. Go down to verse 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, and my mind is unfruitful. And then Paul says, so what shall I do? Shall I pray with my spirit? But I shall also pray with my understanding. I shall see in the spirit, but I shall also sing with my understanding. You see, praying in tongues is one of the gifts of the Spirit. It is given to you freely by God as the Holy Spirit wills. And we must desire these gifts. We must ask God for it. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, the chapter starts off by saying, Pursue love 
and desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So there's a scripture that tells us there that we must desire the spiritual gifts. And it goes on in that same chapter to list the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. You know, praying in the Spirit comes from the fact that we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. As born again believers, when you give your heart to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and He dwells inside of you as a believer. And when you ask God for those gifts, for the Holy Spirit, for the gift of praying in tongues, He will give you exactly that. You know, Luke chapter 13 records an account here. It says here, Jesus actually, His words, He says, If you are evil, knows how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask Him? So God will give you whatever you ask for in prayer. Again, if it's in line with His Word, according to His Word, and if it's God's will for your life. And we see seen here that it is, we have the right to desire the gifts of the Spirit. And so when we pray, Lord, give me the gift of praying in tongues. We have the right to go and ask God for it because it is according to His will. It is what God wants for each and every one of us. You know, praying in the Spirit is not a prerequisite of being saved. You don't have to pray in the Spirit in order to be saved and go to heaven. I get that. But you know, praying in the Spirit is like, for example, baptism. You know, when you go through the waters of baptism, it empowers you for ministry. Praying in the Spirit is one of those tools that will help you to pray to God, knowing that you are praying the perfect will of the Father. As the Scriptures already told you, you're praying the perfect will of the Father. You're not praying to man. And I often say to people, you know, when I say to you, I'm going to pray for you, I might not know your exact situation, but God does. And therefore, I am so grateful for the gift of praying in the Spirit. So when I pray in the Spirit, because God knows you, He knows your situation, I simply say, Lord, you know what Susie's situation is. You know what John's situation is. I bring them before you now. I thank you, Father God, that you will pray through me the perfect will of the Father for their lives. And then I would start praying in the Spirit, just as the Lord leads me. And sometimes my mind is unfruitful. Sometimes you're not even focused on John or Sue's uh, situation. But rather, um, as you're praying in the Spirit, your spirit is busy praying. And you have a confidence that you are praying according to the will of God. So praying in the Spirit is such an awesome and powerful tool. And if you are listening to this message and you're a child of God, and you've never ever had the boldness to ask God for that gift of praying in the Spirit, I want to assure you, friend, you know, from studying the Bible and knowing the text, um, I want to assure you, you're not out of God's will when you desire the gift of praying in the Spirit. Because it will help you. It will help make your prayer life much more effective, I believe, because you're not praying the same thing over and over. And also you can pray for situations that you do not completely understand. So prayer, friend, is a powerful tool that God has given us. And my desire, my prayer for you today is that your prayer life will intensify, that my prayer life will intensify. None of us have gotten to a place where we could say, you know what, I pray enough. You can never pray enough. You can never outpray God. You know what Jesus is doing right now? The Bible says He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. Intercession is when you're praying for someone else's need. Not for your own, but you are interceding, standing in the gap for someone. And that is what Jesus is doing for you and for me right now. He's making intercession for us. And so when we come to God in prayer, it's not always just for our needs. That Lord, bless me, my family, give me what we need. But we need to open up our hearts and start interceding and bringing others before the Lord. Pray for the unsaved. Pray that God will use you. You know, yesterday we went on a prayer walk out in Barbecue Downs, just praying for the area. 
And I was leading the prayer group or the, at the prayer meeting. And I was saying uh, before we started the prayer walk, we're going to pray for every person that lives in the Barbecue Downs community, whether they're saved or not. You see, God loves all his children. We have all been created in his image. Now, sure, not every single person has accepted the Lord as their personal Lord and Savior, but that doesn't take away from the fact that salvation is available for every person. What we need to do is we need to pray and intercede that the Lord will open up the hearts, remove the scales of the eyes of those who do not believe. And I believe that just as we did our prayer walk yesterday, that there is results, that it will have an impact on that community. I believe that what we went for was accomplished in Jesus' name. You see, this is the confidence that I have in God, that when I pray to Him, that He hears me. And so, friend, I'm trusting that this message encouraged you to just spend more time in prayer. And I believe that as you do that, your life, your Christian walk will go from strength to strength. Your relationship with God will go from strength to strength. You know, prayer is a powerful privilege that you and I have to be able to communicate and speak to our Heavenly Father, the one that created this world. And I trust that this message really encouraged you and blessed you and that you've learned something today. Now, before we go, I would like to give those perhaps that do not know Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior to accept him, invite them, invite Jesus into your heart. You say, Pastor Donovan, how do I do that? Well, friend, I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And this prayer is you inviting Jesus into your heart. And I trust and I believe that once you've prayed that prayer and the Holy Spirit comes and he lives inside of you, that your life will be drastically changed. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Let's close our eyes and bow our heads together and repeat after me. Father God, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to the cross. I believe that Jesus is the son of God and that God raised him from the dead. Today, I accept you and invite you, Jesus, into my heart. Be my personal Lord and my Savior. Thank you for your willingness to go to the cross and to bear all my sins on your body. Today, I publicly declare that I put my trust and my faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friend, if you prayed that prayer, I want to congratulate you. That is an awesome decision. And we, as at East Church, we're in Barbecue Downs. We want to let you know that, based on what I've spoken about today, is that we will pray for you. You say, but Pastor Donovan, you don't know me. Well, my friend, as I have explained to you, that we can pray in the Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. My wife prays in the Spirit. And we lift up every single person that's given their hearts to the Lord. I may not know who you are, but God knows you. And so once again, thank you for joining us today. We trust that you're going to have an awesome Sunday and a victorious rest of the week. God bless you until we speak again.